Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna show you some Linux tools that I use to create all my videos for Evenos Linux. I've gotten a ton of questions about the tools that I use, so I thought I'd put a video together, and that's what this video is. Now, first of all, I am using the Manjaro Linux distribution with the Mate desktop, but these tools are readily available in any Linux distribution, with one exception that's a little more challenging to install, but I'll go over that in just a sec. But otherwise, everything is available within the regular repositories for your distribution. So down in my Plank doc here, I have this production folder, and inside there I have a few tools. I have Audacity, which is an audio editing application, GIMP, which is a photo editor. It's similar to Photoshop, but just not quite as powerful. Still it's an extremely powerful application. And we have three video editors, DaVinci Resolve, Caden Live, and Olive Video Editor. Now I have three in here. The one that I use primarily is DaVinci Resolve. Now it is a paid application. There's a free version, but I wouldn't recommend using the free version on Linux. There's just way too many limitations. I have the studio version that I use on both Windows and Linux. So I have that in here. And then I wanted to provide you some other options that I use on occasion in case you wanted to go completely the free route. DaVinci Resolve is the only one that's a pay application on this list. And this is the one that's a little more challenging to install because it's designed only for Cent OS, but there are tools that let you install it on a Debian or Arch-based distribution. I have a link uh, that I'll put right up at the top here that shows you how to install it on both uh, Arch and a Debian-based distribution, two different videos. I'll link those up at the top. Audacity is an audio editing application if you haven't used it. Uh, it's very, very powerful. You can do things like editing your audio, removing noise, uh, changing the, the time, speeding up your audio, slowing it down, all kinds of tools and plugins. It has a wide range of support for different audio formats. So you can just drag your audio file in and edit this. Um, you can use this to clean up your audio prior to bringing it into your video editing tool because a lot of the video editors don't have very good audio tools, but you can really clean it up and tweak it to the way you want it. So it's crystal clear, add some bass, you know, whatever editing you want to do before you bring it into your video editor. So that's Audacity. That's the audio editor that I primarily use. And then going into the next thing, let's go into GIMP. I use GIMP a ton. I use this for all my um, thumbnails for my YouTube videos, and I use it for editing different, you know, stills that I put within the video. GIMP is an extremely powerful uh, photo editing tool. So here's one of the thumbnails that I was working on. You can do layers, you can, I, almost anything that you can do in Photoshop, you can do in here. And for me, for the things that I do, certainly everything that I would use Photoshop for, I can easily do in GIMP. I've been using GIMP for a long time. There is a bit of a learning curve if you've only ever used Photoshop or something similar to Photoshop, but it's not that bad. There's a great community and it's well worth learning. There's a ton of stuff that you can do with GIMP. Okay, so next up is the video editors. Now, like I said, DaVinci Resolve is my editor of choice. This is the one I use on both Linux and Windows. It's completely very full featured uh, application that has video editing, compositing, like world-class color correction and audio editing all built into one application. It is a fantastic tool. There are some issues with Linux where I have to do some tweaking on the audio before I bring it in or else the audio won't play back within here. But I wrote some scripts to do that. I'll actually link those down below if you wanna check those scripts out. They're really simple. They just uh, tweak the audio within the file and then you can use it, no problem. But this software is extremely powerful. You have editing tools. Fusion is a node-based compositor. Think of After Effects, except node-based. The amount of stuff that you can do with Fusion is mind-blowing. And I've only scratched the surface on this for uh, tracking and basic stuff like that. But it's crazy the stuff that you can do with it. Uh, World-class color correction in here. You can tweak uh, all your indi individual clips. You can change everything about them. You can do tracking for uh, facial blurs or blur out license plates, all kinds of things like that audio editing tools. This uses the Fairlight Audio Engine. This is a very full featured application. I usually don't need to use Audacity when I'm using DaVinci Resolve because I can do all that stuff in here. And then last, we just have the deliver page. You can deliver it out 
to various formats, H.264, H.265, you know, all these. You can even export it, your project out to Premiere or Final Cut if you want and use those tools. So this is a very, very powerful application, but again, it is pay. It's $300 for the studio version. And then there's, it's not officially supported on anything other than CentOS. So with that in mind, let's jump into the other two editors. All right, next up, I want to talk about Caden Live, and Caden Live has been around for a long time. It's available on every distribution, and it is an extremely full-featured, very powerful video editor that's completely free. It's amazing the capabilities that this software has, and it's in very, very active development, and it's gotten significantly better in the recent past. They're releasing updates all the time. In fact, this is a beta version that I installed just yesterday, but this software is extremely powerful. You can edit your clips, uh, you can you know, scrub through it. Now, one thing is it doesn't handle 4K video or at least 4K MP4 video very well. Uh, even on this processor, it's a i7-8700K with a GTX 1660 Ti, uh, six gigabyte video card on it and 16 gigs of RAM. It really struggles with 4K where in other editors, I can edit 4K fine without having to make proxies. But uh, for 1080p, it works extremely well. If you make proxies, like I have a 1080p proxy file for this, and you can see the, the scrubbing is working fine. Now with the 4K video, uh, in Caden Live, the playback works fine, but the scrubbing is uh, useless, basically, unless you use the proxies. And um, I do a lot of my work with that scrub feature, um, but you can just go set your in and out points, drag your video onto your timeline, just like you would with any other editor. You can do your, your transitions and effects. You can add, you know, all these transforms to it. Uh, set your color correction, you can do chroma key, all kinds of stuff, extremely powerful application. And combining this with Audacity makes it a great tool for editing videos and all kinds of multimedia in Linux. Now, the last one I wanted to mention, and this is the new kid on the block is Olive Video Editor. This is still in very active developer uh, development by a very small team. It might even be one person, but it's already an extremely powerful uh, video editor in its own right. So let me just go ahead and grab some videos here and I'll just throw them into the timeline. These are 4K videos. And unlike Caden Live with this one, it handles 4K videos very well. You can play them back and they play back at full speed. I can go and scrub and the scrubbing is not completely smooth, but it's certainly much better than Caden Live without having to do proxy files. Again, you can do proxy files in here and improve that even more, but this is still a very new application. You can do uh, basic videos, you can do your cuts, transitions, all that kind of stuff. There's more uh, like advanced color correction coming in the future. The developer has a ton of stuff planned, but Olive is another free one. It should be available in your repository and it is definitely worth checking out as this one progresses. I can definitely see myself using this more and more. All right, so the last tool I wanted to mention is one I forgot to put in my folder here, but that is OBS Studio. OBS is a recording streaming application. It accepts multiple inputs. You can add various sources to a scene and compile them all or composite them all into one video. That's what I'm doing right now. I have my camera recorded to one capture device and I am streaming my desktop to another computer, compositing both of those things together to make one coherent video. So I don't have to go in and layer things in later. It just handles it as it's recording. You can set up multiple scenes and switch between, between those scenes. So you have different sources that comes in really handy if you're streaming and you want to have, you know, a scene where you have a close up on your face and then another scene where you're streaming your game or something, you can just switch between those very, very easily. OBS is a very powerful tool. I do all my screen recording and streaming with this tool and it works great in Linux. So that about sums it up. Those are the tools that I use to record all of my videos for Evnos Linux. I do all my recording and editing in Linux for this channel. And these tools have worked great for me. If you know of other tools, please leave those down in the comment section below. Uh, this is a community where I wanna be able to learn from you guys and have you guys learn from each other. So any tools that you use that I didn't cover in here would be appreciated. 
Thanks for stopping by. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. If you really liked it and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by.